Hi, I'm George Foreman. Don't you go anywhere because Profile is coming right up. <laughs> Welcome to Profiles, I'm Marley Hall. Today's guest is two-time heavyweight boxing champion George Foreman. Besides his legendary boxing career, Foreman has been extremely successful in business. According to Forbes magazine, the George Foreman Grill, thanks in part to a line of infomercials, has earned Foreman more than $60 million in the past five years. After a short break, we'll join our host Mickey Burns as he welcomes the likable George Foreman to Profiles. Welcome back to Profiles. Former heavyweight champ George Foreman is also a best-selling author. With the release of his latest book titled God in My Corner, Foreman candidly tells the story of his childhood, his family, and his triumphs and tragedies in and out of the ring. So let's join our host Mickey Burns on location from Ashford and Simpson Sugar Bar in the heart of New York City as he welcomes the personable George Foreman to Profiles. We'll find out tonight just how good George Foreman is in punching and in taking a punch. Gracious, he buckled. He is up. He is down. Foreman is all over Joe Frazier. Frazier is down again. George Foreman is the heavyweight champion of the world. George Foreman, welcome to our show. Profiles, two-time heavyweight champ. Looking good. Happy to be with you, Mickey. Oh, I'm telling you, I read the book the other night, and it's also a winner. Ah, uh, thank you. Just like your life and career, that has included boxing, a ministry, and business. And business. And your, the name of your book is God in My Corner. That's right. I never could have done anything without God being in my corner. Change you your get, life. You go back to the corner bloody up sometime. You need somebody to <laughs> push you back out there and fight. Well, I got to tell you, I read the book the other night. It's riveting. And I've done my best. You know, I, I've been in a, a minister. A lot of people didn't know. They come up to me and, hey, George, you really kicked uh, Holyfield's donkey. And I was like, by the way, where are you going? Church. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> but, you know, the, the, my life has now been, uh, uh, a lot of people just don't know. It's all about my ministry. Sure is. At the beginning of the book, you write, which was stunning, uh, about a night in Puerto Rico in 1977. You said, and I'm going to read from the book, you said, I died and went to the other, other side after a fight with Jimmy Young in 1977. That's true. I went back to the dress room. I lost a 12-round decision, of which I believed I won. You know, all boxers think we win, even when we knocked out. You know? <laughs> I won that fight. I was robbed. But anyway, I went back to the dress room to cool off, and then in a split second, I was dead, fighting for my life. Looked up, and I was around me was nothing, like a dump yard of every sorrow. And I just got mad. I said, I don't care this death. I believe there's a God. When I said that I was rescued out of nothingness, back alive in that dress room, evidently they picked me up off the floor and put me on the table. I saw blood on my hand and forehead, and I started screaming, Jesus Christ was coming alive in me. I didn't believe in that stuff. No. I thought it was for someone who, losers, you know, you don't have any money, holler Jesus. Your wife leave you, Jesus, you know. But here I was, I had everything. And then I, but then I left Puerto Rico in 77, a happy man, knowing that there was a living God and Jesus Christ existed. You said uh, afterwards, you said, the experience impacted me so profoundly that three decades later, I can't go a single day without thinking about it. Yeah, you get up in the morning, you, the smell of death, you never forget it. Uh, you and, multiply every sad thought you've ever had in your life, you wouldn't come close to that. i never forget it. i jump out of the bed. And if someone said that the stock market has gone down, your money is gone, you say, but I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, from that day forward, you were a new person. Yeah, I've been a brand new person. Human you, being. Said, you said, when God saved me in Puerto Rico, he removed all hatred from my heart. And I had a lot of hate. You and sure you know, did. a boxer, I was a boxer now. I remember these were, this was my referee and this was my judge. <laughs> my hope was that I was going to kill someone in the ring so they'd really be afraid of me. I keep hearing guys that oh, I'll fight George, he's nothing. I said, I'm going to kill one of those fools. I'll stop them. But you know what? After that happened, I went 10 years. I didn't even make a fist. I didn't go back into the gym. I couldn't box anymore. I didn't know how to do that anymore. What, what were some of the other changes in, in your life after 1977? Just had to find all my friends and tell them that I loved them. I'm sorry about what happened. I kissed everybody in their dress room that night. Kissed them. 
told them I loved them. They were like, what has happened here? Because you were gone. You were <laughs> I gone. I was a new man. I was up alive and telling them I loved them. And I had a second chance to, to live, to get home. You know, the, the worst thing is you're about to die, and I hadn't said goodbye to my mother. Mm. That bothered me. Mm -hmm. I went home. My mother thought I was crazy. I didn't <laughs> leave her home. I was there hugging. <laughs> Life changed. I bet. Now, prior to that incident, in the book you call yourself a, a, a miserable millionaire. That's right. Can you believe I'm having, in 1974, I fought in Zaire, Muhammad Ali. I got a $5 million purse. At that time, no one had ever had that kind it's of enormous. money. It didn't exist. And I was so terrible and miserable about losing that fight, I didn't even enjoy it. I didn't even know the, the color of the waters in, in uh, Jamaica, that, anything. It was a miserable life. Yeah, I wanted to die. Yeah, yeah. you Living mentioned that. There. You had been to Jamaica, and a friend of yours said, George, isn't it beautiful there? The waters are blue, and the beaches are clean. And you said, I have no idea. Never looked at anything. Never smelled Just the roses. Just focused, focused on hurting someone in the ring. Unbelievable. Let's backtrack just to the early days. We you speak about those quite frequently in the book. Um, and, and you said, as a child, you said, I was sometimes so hungry uh, that I used to dream that one day I would get locked in a grocery store. Yeah, can you believe that? No. You, people have dreams now of Rolls Royce, but I would dream of, boy, bologna everywhere. <laughs> Can you believe that? Sandwich meat, mayonnaise, All mustard, a whole hamburger. That didn't exist in my world. You were hungry. I would peep through windows and see kids leave pieces of bread on their plate and the skin on, on, the, uh, on the drumstick of a stick of a chicken. I thought, maybe they say, hey, could you go throw this to the dogs for me? And I'd be, oh, sure. And you go get it. Yeah. Ah, that's yeah. how poor. And, you know, to be without, it shapes your life hunger sometimes. Sure. And you never forget it. You never forget it. That's why I, want to, now I've, I realize now there's no kid should be without something to eat. Well said. Uh, what type of boy was George Foreman for our viewers? Bad boy. <laughs> well, you, you know, uh, matriarchal family, my mother raised us, a father, mother broke up early in life and she had to put down the rules and she go to work, I become a terrible boy, I come home, act good, read the Bible. But I didn't have much of guidance in life, no role models, the only kids in the neighborhood who mounted to something were those who had gone to prison and back. Okay. They were admired. So Turning point for you was, was where? I heard a commercial. The great Jimmy Brown and Johnny Unitas did a commercial, the football players, yeah. for the Job Corps. Yes, they said, if you're yes, looking for a second yes. chance, join the job corps. I was a high school dropout running from the cops, and I got that second chance. That I would join the job corps. Open some doors for you. Yeah, I got my GED. Can you believe that? Important. General Education Diploma. I was on my way to college when I won an Olympic gold medal. That's great. And I also read in the book that one of your first jobs was at uh, a moving company. Yeah. You didn't like that, though. No. <laughs> a dollar, I worked a dollar and 25 cents an hour. I, I read worked that. 17 hours, got $17. And then, and then, Broke my back. And you said that you were so tired, you went home, you fell asleep. And got fired. And you got fired. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they man. work on a moving. You know, they I'd worked, I already worked 12 hours. They yeah. said, come back. Couldn't but do it. I just couldn't do it. I walked and, and uh, I got fired. Oh, man. That hurt me so bad. Because and your brother. I my name tag, you know. And you disappointed your brother. I did. He yeah. was so ashamed. They teased him. Rag, your brother can't cut it. Can't cut it. Yeah. yeah but um, I, my hope was to have that job. But, you know. Uh, I'll I, never forget that no one wants to get fired from a job. No matter how and, and even or what I, kind I got of job to be a millionaire in life, but I've never gotten through life that I felt bad about being fired. I've tried to make it up in life. That's interesting. Doesn't matter what job you have, you must give your best. Interesting. Uh, I was startled to read in this book uh, over the weekend that prior to the Ali fight in 1974, uh, that you felt someone had slipped a drug in your drink in your water, and that basically you were drugged in that fight. Do you still feel that way? Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. But I'm so happy because these were like thugs who uh, putting stuff, medicine in my water. I remember I had a ceremony with my manager. I'd always drink the water. That's before the fight because yeah. I would dry out, go without liquids for a day. Sure. Then we would rejoice just before the fight. He gave it to me this time. I said, man, there's medicine in this water. Same water as always. And I took a drink, so I didn't want to make him feel bad. I said, man, there's medicine in this water. There was medicine in the water. And there was terrible medicine out there in the ring, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, bad medicine. But, <laughs> but you also... That right hand, you know? Yeah, yeah. But this was a great fighter, a great courageous athlete, and he beat me fair and square.